effort to contribute at this point. Uh, but uh, it's important not to think that typesetting is just tech because there's a, there was a whole industry. And, and of course, tech has never had any significance at all in the newspaper industry, which probably have printed the largest number of words ever printed. But they've done so with very different equipment and very tight deadlines on uh, going from whatever the reporter is writing to it, appearing in print on a sheet of newsprint and coming off at enormous speeds from these uh, giant rolls of paper that are moved by very large forklifts. It's quite an interesting, I have not visited a printing plant myself, but I've watched videos of visits to printing plants. And it's really a surprising technology. Yeah, th th these, this is the time when Newspapers are physically distributed and so forth. I, re I read the New York Times every day. Mm -hmm. And I read today's version of the New York Times. And yes. I read it on and my of course, And of course, it's PDF that made that possible. That was a, a really significant technology development because it's meant in many countries, a small number of newspapers from larger cities have become national papers. It's true of the US, Canada, Britain, and most other countries in Europe. No, I, I I read it through just through an app or through the web page. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't read it in print, and I don't think I've, I don't recall ever printing and ever having printed anything off from the New York Times. Well, up to about three or four years ago, in my building here in Salt Lake City, I could pick up a London Financial Times, a Wall Street mm -hmm. Journal, a New York uh, mm -hmm. uh, Times, plus two of the local papers. So I had often four or five different newspapers to read in the course of one day. And sadly, on January 1st this year, both our local papers ceased to print a daily edition. They, they now print only a weekly edition, which normally arrives either Saturday evening or Sunday morning. I like the print newspaper. I like sitting and having a cup of coffee and spreading the newspaper out and doing the crossword. And... Yeah, well, I sit here in America and, and would have it with tea, not coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I think that, well, different tastes, different tastes, that's all. The financial information. Yeah, I've got another one to add to my list, which is Bloomberg. Bloomberg sort of became a rival and supplanter of, I think, Reuters. And financial news and business news have got a long tradition that started with print and i think that lloyd's sort of lloyd's insurance started as a coffee house and then i think there was a as i recall i might be wrong there might have been a, a weekly newsletter coming out of the coffee house of comings and goings in the harbors and that sort of thing. But the financial industry, financial industry, that's the word. Um, so you mentioned the Financial Times is, is, um, is really important in terms of um, there being money to pay for the communication of information. Mm. Uh, I think that print has got its important aspects, but until 1920 or so print and to a very 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 limited degree telegraph were the only ways of communicating information on a large scale mm -hmm. and it was the means to an end if you like and with the rise of the internet and everything else like that other means can apply and um, I think that's something that the tech community need, needs to be aware of, that people, sometimes you want print, but sometimes people just want the information and they'll take it in whatever form that's convenient. Well, I... I think a lot of people, especially young people today, they get snippets of information, 
but it's very, very superficial compared to what one could enjoy with the printed newspaper, where one could, could read in depth. And it, it really bothers me that uh, this move to digital publishing in newspapers has really produced an environment where all most people see are a few headlines that fit in one screen full, and that's their day's exposure to the news. I noticed many, many newspapers have sort of a, a web page like uh, interface, which is most people read. Some also have a, a PDF of essentially the same content as the printed version. But I think it's much less popular. I think most people tend to just look at the web page and, and the headlines and maybe, maybe click on the headlines and, and read an article. But um, you know, although this PDF is also available, which is identical to the print version, more or less. Yeah, and of course, the, the important newspapers that I would like to get access to are subscription only. So you, you either pay and have access or you don't pay and you have no access. You might see a headline from them that's been reproduced on uh, a search engine site, but uh, you don't have access to the content. I've, at, at the University of Utah, we have a subscription to the New York Times archive, which goes back to the early 1800s. And I found that uh, extremely useful and I would like to have similar access to the London Times archive and we have none. It's been rather frustrating. I was particularly curious to learn in the first part of the 20th century, how quantum mechanics, relativity and nuclear weapons came to the knowledge of the general public. And I can do that quite well with the New York Times, uh, but I'm sure there were comparable reports in the London Times, but I can't see them. I am approaching my talk at the Tug Conference, I'm trying to anyway, on, on the basis of what are the human purposes and the human values, rather than how can we perfect the current technology we have. Um, I, I sort of see myself, try to see myself as a human being first and a person that uses tech second. I'm reminded that um, Charles Dickens and Leo Tolstoy and many other people you wrote their novels on a week by week basis and they were published yes. in weekly magazines. Yes, Samuel Clemens as well, Mark Twain. Yeah, and I think that's re re really interesting. And it's part of mass literacy. Uh, there's a man called Richard Hoggart who wrote a very important book, which I regret I haven't read or haven't read properly called the uses of literacy and it's really a study of working class life but it's also about literacy and it's one of the important cultural studies of the 1950s in Britain so literacy has its purposes and its uses, if you like, and it's, it's part of human culture, just as language and cooking and dance and music and, and everything else are part of human culture. And the technology is a carrier, I think. I'm not, you can think of it, well, I don't know, Marshall McLuhan says the medium is the message. And sometimes he's right on that. I'll stop. Was his name Hogar, H O G A R, or A R T H? Richard H O G G A R T. Oh, okay. Hogar. Uses of literacy. Mm -hmm. 